Scott, uh, philosophy and science uh, of recent date have sort of gotten into a, a tangle where uh, some scientists say that philosophy kind of uh, messes up science and philosophers say that scientists think they're uh, 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 not doing philosophy and they're just doing bad philosophy. As you, as you look at philosophy, uh, uh, how can you see it being a positive contribution to increasing knowledge in the world? Well, uh, so, you know, the first thing I like to say is that the world needs uh, good philosophers, if for no other reason than to refute the bad philosophers, <laughs> right? It's the same reason why we need soldiers, we need uh, lawyers, uh, you know, just having no philosophers is not an equilibrium, as we might say. But, but beyond that, you know, I think that, um, um, you know, Okay, uh, e e even in the age of science, you know, philosophy does play a very important role in helping to clarify concepts. Uh, you know, I'm at a meeting right now with uh, philosophers, and you know, these days I go every year or two to uh, meetings where I talk to professional philosophers, and I find that they're, you know, they act that some um, often they actually listen to you much more carefully than your fellow scientists do. They're really good at spotting imprecision in, in language or unstated assumptions, things of that kind. Now, uh, at the same time, I also think it's true that uh, uh, the, the, the critique of philosophy is that, you know, it doesn't really make progress, right? It just goes around in circles. You know, and, and, and that does have some truth to it. But I think that there is a sort of philosophical progress, which is possible uh, and, and which is which is wonderful uh, when it happens. And this is that we can often sort of identify some aspect of a philosophical question that can actually be addressed using math or using science. And then we can just sort of break it off and then we can tackle that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then of course, you know, people will say, but you've just replaced the, the, the real mystery <laughs> by this other question that you can answer. And you know, we say, okay, fine. We should admit that that's what we're doing. You know, we're using philosophy as an inspiration for science questions, but you know, now we can keep returning to the philosophical question. We can find, okay, maybe, you know, we can find a new scientific question that captures some new aspect of the philosophical question that was, you know, that hadn't been touched before. Uh, and, you know, and, and in this way, we can actually make progress. So, uh, you know, to give uh, a few, there are many questions that people would once have called philosophical, like, is nature determined or random, mm -hmm. right? Now, mm -hmm. you know, we have quantum mechanics that can say a lot about that. What is the nature of mathematical knowledge, right? Uh, you know, since the, uh, uh, the time of Gödel, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, we've learned that mathematics itself can say a tremendous amount about that question. Um, you know, or, or like, uh, what are uh, uh, infinitesimals, right? Can you have something, you know, can you have something that's smaller than any positive number but greater than zero, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, when you drop a ball, you know, is it moving at the very instant when you drop it? Okay, <laughs> today, at least if we've taken a calculus course, right, we hopefully no longer get confused about that sort of thing that was, you know, hugely confusing to the ancient Greek philosophers. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, I think, uh, um, what Phyllis, th th this is the closest thing to philosophical progress that I can see. People taking the ancient mysteries of philosophy and not quite solving them, but taking an aspect of them that you know captures part of what people want to know about and then addressing it using the tools of math and science.